Welcome to Seize the Mains Daily Answer Writing Initiative by Raj Malhotra's IS Academy. I'm Surbhi Sardana and I'm taking this lecture discussion on UPSC and State Civil Services Mains Answer Writing from Monday to Friday at 9 p.m. If you are new to this initiative, you can download the schedule or the timetable till May 3rd from the link in the description below. Also, the special part about this initiative is that you can not only learn answer writing with us but also share your answers with us on the given email id to be evaluated by our experts entirely free of cost so it's day 43 of seize the mains and our topic for today is from gs paper 3 it is challenges to internal security through communication networks role of media and social networking sites in internal security challenges so today's question is Keeping in view India's internal security, analyze the impact of cross-border cyber attacks. Also discuss defensive measures against these sophisticated attacks. Answer in 150 words for 10 marks. Send your answers by 9 p.m. of 9th April. That is in the next 24 hours. So see, this question contains two parts, but it has to be answered only in 150 words. So you'll have to cover both the parts of the question, but you'll have to also keep in mind the word limit. Let's understand what the question is. First of all, you'll have to analyze what is the impact of cyber attacks happening from across the border, cross border cyber attacks impact on India's internal security. So in this respect, you'll have to discuss or analyze whatever are the impacts. The second part discuss, uh, asked you to discuss that what are the defensive measures that India has already in place and then we'll proceed with a conclusion. Let's see what will be the structure of our answer. As usual, we'll start by writing an introduction. Your introduction for security and international relations questions should preferably contain some data point, some report that you can quote or things like that. For example, um, here we'll see what uh, what report that we've quoted in uh, in the next slide. So introduction should talk about cyber security in India, use some data or popular reports. Your body paragraph will contain the analyze part, analyze part of cyber security attacks on internal security of India, um, cyber attacks on internal security of India. And you'll have to write those points with examples. You'll have to write down specific impacts, not general impacts. So uh, the body paragraph second will uh, uh, have defensive measures which are already in place. And at the end, you can give a conclusion by giving solutions to how we can prevent cyber attacks or, or how we India can increase its cyber security or give a way forward or uh, just appraise whatever or just sum up what you have uh, written in the question. Just praise the efforts of India and its contribution to cyber security. So let's see what is the introduction for today. So uh, see cyber security or cyber attacks inc incidences are rising in India because digitization, the pace of digitization has increased in India. India is slowly becoming one of the largest internet and smartphone economies in the world. This rise in digitization has also led to an increase in the incidences of cyber attacks in the country. So here you will exp you are explaining the general scenario that why cyber attacks are increasing. So, although India was ranked at 10th position in Global uh, Cyber Security Index of 2020 due to the efforts by government in enhancing cyber security in the country. So, this is a very important report. India went down by like 37 places, went up by 37 places. It improved by 37 places to a score of around 97 point something out of 100. So, that's a, a very big achievement for India. So quote this report when uh, when you're talking about cyber security. So India's rank, global rank is 10 when it comes to cyber security due to the efforts of the government. But cyber security is still a challenge in India using this line, using this idea that cyber security is a challenge despite of the good rank that we have got. And uh, we'll move the direction of our answer towards the body paragraph and elaborate that what are the impacts of cyber attacks. So due to the efforts by the government, it is, uh, but still, it is one of the biggest challenges to internal security of India, especially due to the presence of a hostile neighborhood. Here we are giving examples or giving an indication of Pakistan and China. Don't directly write the name of the names of countries. It is very unofficial kind uh, kind of a thing to use that, uh, use that, those names directly in your answer in the introduction itself. 
citing some examples you can use the name of particular countries in a negative light when you have some examples to quote but using them uh, their names directly in the introduction tends to blaming a neighbor uh, neighboring country so that that does not give a very positive outlook to your answer so just say that we have a hostile neighborhood and that increases the chances of cyber attacks towards our country so the linkage point here would be uh, the cross border cyber attacks have the following impacts on india's internal security this is entirely the line that has been taken from your question statement now let's see what are the impacts so we'll discuss these impacts in point format the first first uh, first is financial loss now financial loss has two aspects to it first of all you'll have to fight a cyber attack as soon as possible to gain the confidence of the public to avoid the losses that a cyber attack can create so to uh, to hasten to pace up the effects of your uh, of, of the steps that we are taking a lot of money goes in there secondly it has been seen that 71% of the cyber attacks of the or the cross border cyber attacks have been on fintech or financial technology or on the financial sector in india so that amounts to a lo lot of lot of financial loss for the country so around 71% of cyber attacks in india have targeted the financial infrastructure according to data security council of india cyber crimes in india have caused around rupees 1.2 lakh 1.25 lakh crore loss in 2019 you can quote the latest da data or some other data also i'm repeating again reiterating again that this is just a 150 words answer here we provide you the entire content for a particular issue that we are discussing for the day you don't have to copy this answer just make sure that when you are writing about financial loss your uh, your explanation doesn't exceed one or two lines at max and the entire answer should be addressed in a 150 words boundary so that has to be kept in mind if you are thinking that you'll use headings then it is preferable uh, preferable that on the first page itself after you have written introduction and your linkage point draw a flow chart or a schematic like this or a diagram like this and just write down what are the impacts of these attacks on the internal security of the country write down your heading here and write down all the impacts here so that the examiner while going through the pages can see whatever you are writing about on the first page itself it becomes easier to evaluate and it becomes easy on the eyes of examiner so that positivity tends to uh, in that positivity it tends to give you more marks so um, and the other approach is that after using that kind of diagram just note down the heading and don't write full sentences for example this is about financial loss just write point 1 2 3 just data points or some important terms that you find good for financial loss okay so that is how uh, you need to write your answer especially for 150 words the other part is that uh, cyber attacks have been planned on uh, many critical information infrastructure in the country on the power sector on the nuclear power plants time and again cyber attacks are happening intelligence agencies of india have been reporting such attacks sometimes they do not even come in the uh, knowledge of general public so that's how intense those cyber attacks have become so whenever these things come to light or when they affect the crucial infrastructure of the country the trust of the people in the government in the government it goes down the amount of fear increases so that is a new kind of terrorism that happens just not by attacking the critical infrastructure but also it is also being used to plan terrorist attacks so let's see what is the explanation for uh, today cyber attacks on critical infra uh, information infrastructure power plants nuclear uh, nuclear plants telecommunication etc can bring the entire country to a grinding halt it affects the confidentiality integrity and availability of information the effect of the attack too can outpace the defense technology or security of the country the third one is very important that the amount of uh, that the kind uh, the level of radicalization in the country is increasing why is it increasing and from what point has it started increasing as digitization took pace in india as it speeded up in india certain forces or certain groups have tried to portray india in a particular light for example anti a particular religion or a particular community this generates hatred and these such messages over social networking sites or social media are being circulated by 
people sitting outside the country and having vested interest in uh, like against the internal security of India. So it can be used to disrupt social harmony through radicalization. Terrorists may use social media to plan and execute terror attacks and for virulent propaganda to incite hatred and violence, recruit, recruit youth and raise funds. Using fake news, misinformation, continued propaganda of fake accounts, including violence on the streets of India, etc. Inciting violence on the street of India. So many riots are also uh, many riots are also incited due to fake news or due to the propaganda that runs on social media platforms which is a problem for the internal security of uh, of the country the fourth one is that these cyber attacks are affecting our foreign policy the way india is portrayed at the international level that is redefining our social uh, foreign policy especially with the middle eastern countries so Foreign policy is facing a huge challenge because of the influence operations and the propaganda campaign which have been run by the intelligence agencies of neighbours. Examples, uh, exam For example, they always portray that Indian Muslims are in danger and India is not a safe country for Muslims, which puts our relations with Middle Eastern countries which have a considerable number of Muslims. Those relations, country, uh, relations with those countries are in, are suffering due to such propaganda or uh, they portray India as Islamophobic or things like that or anti a particular religion, a particular sect, a particular community. So it influences the entire in Indian foreign policy and relations with Middle Eastern countries. The fifth one is on the individual level and on the level of businesses. One, on one hand, the uh, businesses or the companies which have a lot of information of their customers that comes under stake due to which internal security is at stake. On the other hand, at the individual level, as individuals, we are not very aware of the kind of information that we are sharing. The phone, the smartphones in our hand or the gadgets that we are using, we don't know what kind of information is going uh, to these organizations or to places which we do not know about. So that is that causes an internal security problem because as it is said, said data is the new oil and the kind of information that is shared through gadgets to people and organizations we don't we know nothing about due to the lack of awareness of us using gadgets using new and new gadgets from time to time so that is a very big threat to the internal security of our country so in case of the individuals personal information and privacy faces the most dangerous situation companies possessing crucial data and information on their Systems in times of a cyber attack may lead to loss of competitive information, loss of employees or customers' private data resulting into complete loss of public trust on the integrity of the organization. And in fact, when these attacks take place or a particular person is duped due to his or her data being leaked and uh, due, uh, people are targeted individually. When their data is leaked, they are not targeted collectively, they are targeted individually. So many times we receive messages or phone calls regarding lotteries or regarding some offers or discounts or you know very very attractive offers or discounts from time to time and many people fall for them and when they fall for them and when they are cheated by these agencies or these people whom do they approach many people do not even know what is the right kind of authority to approach or where to complain about so lack of awareness uh, causes this leakage of data on the one hand and on the other hand there is no resolution to the problems who are being uh, of the people who are being cheated upon so that's another internal security problem and it leads, uh, leads to loss of confidence or trust in the present government or the present authoritative system of the country now uh, we, uh, the second part of the question talks about what are the defensive measures that are already in place the first is the national cyber security strategy 2020 which aims to generate awareness and uh, it brings in cyber security uh, through stringent audits so this is the first one the second one is a uh, few years back this national telecom security Dri uh, directive was put in place because a lot of misinformation a lot of leakage was happening through hardware that we were importing for the telecom sector especially from countries like china so this was faced by countries like U us and europe also supply chain infection we call it so m earlier it was thought that uh, you know this hacking can take place only through softwares but after a certain time we realized that whatever technology we are importing from other countries from developed countries especially or 
uh, countries like China, the hardware system, uh, the hardware that we are um, uh, importing while they when they are inter integrated in our telecom systems, there is a lot of information that is sent to the originate, uh, originating country or some terrorist organizations. So, this telecom uh, security directive was put in place and one uh, and this was uh, this was one of the first steps by any country over the world. So, this was a very bold step by India. The other one is draft personal uh, data protection bill that was uh, brought on the recommendation of Justice B N Sri Krishna committee. So, it uh, it protects the personal data of people. So, you do not have to write about the explanation of this uh, act or bill whatever it is. You just have to write about it in a keyword format that this is one of the defensive measures. It is expected that uh, a particular a different question will be asked on this type and what are the benefits of this kind of act that is being brought up by the government. So, but uh, that is a discussion for another day. Here you just have to mention it in a positive light. The fourth one is where you can report cyber crimes that is certain, certain. So, it is national computer emergency response team make sure that you study about it for your prelims also because a lot of complaints are directly addressed by this organization. So, this is one of the defensive measures in place. The other one is protection and resilience of critical inf uh, information in infrastructure with the setup of national critical information infrastructure protection center. So, these are the defensive measures when it comes to your mains preparation make sure that you update yourself with the current defensive measures that have been brought up. Now, coming to the conclusion see internal security challenge is at three places firstly for the government secondly the kind of information businesses or companies have in India. So, if they are attacked again internal security is under threat and third on the individual level because the responsibility of government is to ensure peace and stability in the country and that comes from every individual. So, if the data or you know the security of one individual is under threat the entire internal security it is a threat to entire internal security of India. So, when you give your conclusion or even your problems when you are discussing make sure that you divide them into three parts first on the government level, second on the business level and third on the individual level. So, give solutions accordingly for example, for individual level we discuss the personal data protection bill for the business level we told that how it is a problem because the businesses contain a lot of crucial data for example, even your private bank. So, and the third is on the government level uh, how it affects foreign policy, how it aids terrorism and things like that. So, the second point in giving in conclusion you will have to say that it is a global uh, problem and international cooperation is required. In one of the previous lectures we discussed that what role India has to play with its non-permanent membership of uh, United Nations Security Council. So, since uh, you, uh, India is a member of Security Council now, India can bro uh, bring it up into the limelight, international cyber security can be brought up into the limelight. So, you can say that with its seat in United Nations Security Council, India can garner support of member countries for stronger cooperation. The other solution is bringing awareness, bringing awareness is the solution to most of the problems especially when it comes to technical and security aspects of things because that is where problems originate from. People do not know about the gadget that they are using. So, that awareness that kind of digital literacy has to be generated. So, as di digitization is spreading across rest of the world build awareness most people do not even configure their pro products properly which are essential for prevention of hacking and misuse of data. So, uh, in the third point we are addressing what we used in the introduction that is ITU's index in which India ranked at 10th position. So, India's high ranking in ITU's index has been due to its openness and its willingness to collaborate with other governments in fighting the cyber security challenges across the world. Then you can add this part of security council that more cooperation is required and India is in the right place to ensure more cooperation in future. So, there is a lot of uh, development required we need to produce indigenous infrastructure indigenous technology because that is where the problem begins when the crucial technology that is required by your country that is entirely being Im imported or most of it is being imported. The exporting country has a leverage it has the power to misuse misuse that import route 
uh, it can in uh, have chips or certain kind of softwares can be put in the hardware itself which can leak a lot of crucial information so indigen indigenization or production of technology needs to happen at a very fast pace so development is required india lacks indigenization in hardware as well as software cyber security tools this makes india cyber space vulnerable to cyber attacks motivated by state and non state actors so uh, this was about the answer for today share your answers with us in the next 24 hours we are continuously evaluating your answers and responding with our feedback so make sure that you send them by 9 pm tomorrow also uh, we'll meet with another lecture discussion now on monday complete your targets over the weekend and stay tuned with us